hello, hello. Uh, how's everyone doing? Is everyone all right? Yes. Yeah, okay, nice, lovely. Uh, yeah, my name's Ben. It's very nice to be here. Um, I'm going to do some jokes. Uh, <laughs> I hope you like them. Um, if you do, laugh at them. Uh, if you don't like them, just let them wash over you like Enya. Um, <laughs> this is lounge jazz if you don't like it, okay? This is loud ASMR. Um, my name is Ben. My name is Ben Pope. Ben is short for Benedict. Uh, so my full name is Benedict Pope, um, which is... <laughs> yes, thank you. Not a joke. Uh, that is my actual human name. Um, that's also my birth certificate. Benedict, the name of a villain in a period drama. And Pope, the name of a villain now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, uh, that's me. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know how this is gonna go. Um, I've not really talked to many people recently, uh, and I've sort of forgotten how to. Um, I, uh, I work at a bookshop uh, at the moment, and the other day a customer came in and we finished a transaction, uh, and they said thank you, and I just went, <laughs> no choice. So, <laughs> I have no fucking idea what's coming out of my head. I, <laughs> I, the, the, the reason that I haven't spoken to many people recently uh, is because about three weeks ago, uh, I went into hospital uh, and I, I had severe abdominal pain. I had my appendix removed, um, which, yes, thank you. Um, the ripple of sympathy. Um, uh, I, basically, I, if you don't know what the appendix is, it's like this little uh, pepper army that sort of like hangs off your large intestine. Uh, it's like this mystery organ, like no one knows what it does. It doesn't matter if you take it away. Like it doesn't just, it doesn't seem to have any function. It's this little liberal democrat that sort of just like hangs <laughs> off um, uh, um, your <laughs> large intestine. And it doesn't, like it's a stowaway. It doesn't like, it doesn't really do anything. It's like, it doesn't matter if you take it out. And so basically, like, I, I don't want to overstate the, the, you know, the surgery. Like appendix removal is like just, it, if triple bypass is up here, appendix removal is down here with like uh, circumcision and uh, haircut. Like it's like not a, a thing, like it doesn't matter. They do so many of them, right? So, but, but what I'm just saying is like, the set might be a bit rusty because I've, I've been in surgery. Uh, or it could be the best I've ever been. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I've cleared all the dead wood. Like there's not, I've got, it's all, I just, there's, I'm streamlined now. I just purr like a Lexus. There's nothing wrong. This is just, I've cleared my cookies. Do you understand what I'm saying? I've like, I've decluttered. I've Marie Kondoed my abdomen. My appendix was not sparking joy. <laughs> it was causing diarrhea. Um, um, so I, let's just see how we go. Um, I, it's been a weird couple of years. A weird couple of years, you would agree? A strange old time. Um, it ha I, I felt I just every day is a fucking weirdness to me. The other I, I, the other day I realized I, I you know I went I went into the pandemic in my mid twenties, and I came out thirty, <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I went in wanting a girlfriend. I've come out wanting an allotment. Like what <laughs> the fuck is going on? You know, this is genuinely true. In the last two years, I became a dad. Um, uh, thank you. Oh, that's very kind. Uh, not really, just sort of spiritually. I just I. <laughs> I just feel like one, you know? <laughs> just, uh, just like tired all the time and uh, uh, I wear fleeces and say hiya. Like that sort of thing. <laughs> Awful, dreadful. <laughs> if you pass me in a narrow corridor, I'll go, ooh. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> make my own muesli now. The other day I had a dream and the dream was top to bottom. I went to Curry's. That was, <laughs> that was the whole thing. <laughs> Like it's just got, it's got really bad, you know? Um, and I don't, I don't mind it too much. There's nothing wrong with getting older. It's fine, it's good. Your taste changes, you know? That's a good thing. You, things change, but uh, you know, like I, I've become a man now. I've embraced tapas. <laughs> it's happened, you know? Cause like, you know, in my early 20s, who here is 25 or younger? Give me a woo. <laughs> All right, some hope in the front row. That's nice. That's good. Congratulations. That was so ghostly as well. I'm so sorry. That sounded like someone was squeezing the air out of you, and I was <sighs> um, actually quite horrific. Um, I am. Um, uh, well done. Look for getting through it. Um, uh, remember to breathe. I, um, I when I was in my early twenties, truly, when I was like twenty, if I'd gone to like a, a tapas restaurant, you know, and I'd seen a, a table full of tapases. Um, <laughs> Tapai, and I, if I'd seen them, I, I would have been like, who has laid this table for a cat? 
Like what? <laughs> what are all these sauces? What is this? Starters forever? That's not a meal, that's a curse. This is horrible. I can do a restaurant not awake. Why are there all these canapes? What is this? Thumbelina's leaving do? What is this fucking nonsense? They're like, oh, it's anti-pasty. Where's the pasty? Like, that's what I'm after. This is fucking foreplay. Where's the sex? You know? Foreplay for hours and hours and hours. And then you get to 30 and you realise, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's what we're after, really, isn't it? Tap ass the fingering of fine dining. <laughs> the eating out of eating out. Okay, that's the last one, don't worry. Um, everyone chill out, okay? <laughs> Um, no, my taste has changed in a lot of ways, you know? Um, I, I, in my early 20s, I would have drunk any kind of coffee at all. Like anything. You know, lawnmower fuel. The worst stuff. <laughs> truly dreadful stuff. Now, I am a snobby little bitch about coffee. <laughs> I will only serve, be served coffee by two types of people, okay? First type of person, uh, old Italian man. The older the better. The wrinklier the better. Size of a walnut, surface area of a circus tent. Like that's... <laughs> You want a crunchy little gentleman, face like a map of Norway. Like, he will sort you out, okay? He's good. And then the other guy, very prevalent in Islington, um, man bun. <laughs> we know man bun, don't we? You know, the guy dresses a blacksmith, that guy. <laughs> the carpenter's apron, you know. He comes in from the forge, but it's a cappuccino, that guy. All the, like, got, you know, piercings all over his face, gothic camping equipment holding his face together, hook, line, sinker, a chain on his ear, you pull it, a toilet somewhere flushes. <laughs> his name's Francois, he's from Guildford. Um, he's an arsehole, but he's got a PhD in milk, so he'll, he'll sort you out, you know? So I like, I like that, that's changed. Um, the other thing I'm trying to get better at, uh, uh, and this is something I think for, for you know my 30s I'm like yeah, this is like, something I've learned starting to learn to drive. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> just no one gives a shit. That's fine. I, it's fine. It's embarrassing. I'm a 30 year old who can't drive. Like a 30 year old with a provisional driving license is pathetic, isn't it? Because it's a provisional driving license, the most pathetic piece of card you can own. It's a, there's a piece of card that says I can drive if I learn to drive, which is like, <laughs> what a big proviso that is on the provisional drive. What a big if, you know? It's really this laminated piece of hope that I carry around in my wallet. Police officers are like, can you drive? And I'm like, oh, one day. <laughs> it's my greatest wish. I just, I've, I've got to learn to drive, you know, for a lot of reasons. You know, driving my family around and that kind of thing. But also, mainly, the main reason, I cannot take the night bus again. <laughs> You know, I've just made the decision now. I've done it my whole 20s, coming back from parties at the end of the world. I will not, it's not a good time. <laughs> Everyone lies, everyone's like, oh, it's fine, get on the night, but it just sucks, it's so bad. It's such a bad, it's a dreadful, and I'm not talking about the bus, by the way. I love the bus, the bus is a dream, okay? The bus is great, I love, you know, a little happy community support vehicle. You can get on it, you can, you know, chat with people. You can, you know, look over people's shoulders, look at the stuff they're typing on their phones. That's, that's fun, you know? I did that the other day, so I was looking over someone's store and there was a lady and she was texting her mum, and uh, I knew she was texting her mum, because her mum was saved in her phone, and as my mum. <laughs> it's just like so cute, isn't it? Isn't that lovely? But also it suggests that there are so many mums on her phone. <laughs> She's had to delineate which one is hers. This is a four-year-old lady who would look at her phone. If it just said mum, she'd have been like, well, that could be anyone. <laughs> what the fuck is that about? You know? <laughs> also the weird the word my is the weird word there, right? That's a strange pronoun. But even if you change that, there's a weirder pronoun you can have there. Imagine if I looked over her shoulder and it said, your mum. <laughs> <laughs> and she turned around and gone like, ha, ah, gotcha. <laughs> Terrifying, you know? The bus is a dream, I love the bus. The bus is great, you can go, you get to press the button, bing bong, off we go, ha ha, fun on the bus, ding dong, off we go, ding ding, ding ding. Like, off we go, great time, I love the bus, okay? The night bus is a fucking ferry to the underworld. It is a plague mobile. It is an orgy with a steering wheel. It's a, a brothel, it's a hospital, it's a zoo. It's like there's so much stuff going on on the bus. It's this septic horse box full of raving cunts. Who are these people on the bus? If you don't know what the night bus is, some people don't. I did this material in Newcastle recently. They don't have it. Um, I, I discovered on stage. Anyway. Um, 
it, it, if it's like, you know, it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday night, you could see it this very evening. You, you stand at a bus, you see this thing appear on the horizon. Uh, it's got its hazard lights on, not for anything specific, just in general as a warning. And it's, it's got no license plate, just the Jolly Roger. And it's coming towards you at a speed that suggests it has a jet engine because the driver has correctly identified that everyone on, on the vehicle is a ticking time bomb. <laughs> A piss and shit and come and puke and he needs to get them to their destination before the eggs hatch, right? So <laughs> he pulls up to the bus stop and at this point, it's, this is the best bit because you can look up and you can see what you're in for on the night bus. So you can look up and you can see the rogues gallery of the sick and insane up there. Like for instance, once I was on the night bus too, I got on that and then I just saw something smush against the window. An asshole, a bear, a bear asshole. <laughs> Just splunk, and um, and and the doors open somehow. It's 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 uh, it's louder on the bus than off the bus. You you don't make any eye contact with the bus driver because he doesn't want to take any responsibility for all the <laughs> bastards in his caboose. So you go around the corner, and there it is: the Sodom and Gomorrah immersive theater experience. There are people from every walk of life doing the craziest fucking shit you've ever seen. There's four guys around the same kebab. There's uh, a toddler covered in ketchup screaming. There's, uh, th there's couples in every bit of the life cycle of coupledom. You know, there's couples breaking up. There's couples ignoring each other. There's couples who are kissing so violently. It looks like one's lost their keys inside the other one. <laughs> You know, everyone's there. The guy having a very intense conversation on his earbuds, and then you realize he doesn't have any earbuds. Um, <laughs> there's the two guys who think cocaine is a seasoning. Um, and there's, there are white girls rapping all the time. And then, um, <laughs> in amongst it all, there's always two elderly American tourists who are just going, I just need to get to see pancreas. <laughs> And you know everyone there is pissed out of their mind because as the bus takes a corner, you hear a thousand bottles roll across the deck. Because you're on the ghost ship, full of the souls that hell didn't want. <laughs> so I'm learning to drive. Um, thanks guys, it's been a pleasure. You're very nice. My name is Ben Pope. Uh, I'll see you again. Thank you very much.